Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. And I had kind of a mess up with my set here, so if my angles and everything are off, that's why. So let's take a look at the pens. So, from left to right, I have a Nikaya Decapod Twist, Lamy 2000, Geha 722, Lang CV Crocodile Clip Celluloid, Caveco 37, Caveco V14S, Pilot Custom Heritage 92, and a Pen BBS. I'm going with 266. So, those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Uh, I'm also, um, actually, uh, my, the, my list just got a lot shorter because three of them ran out today. Um, and I've got an update for you at the end about the Geha, Geha 322, which is one of the pens, but it ran out earlier this week. So let's take a look at how they write. And uh, as always, we'll be using the Bomo Art Journal. So I do apologize for uh, being tardy. Uh, I'm really tardy and I really have no excuse for it. I just, uh, honestly, I spent my whole day in front of a computer screen and I didn't feel like being in front of a computer. And then I never thought about it again. So this is supposed to be, uh-oh, that's not a good sign. Well, that's peculiar. Usually I uh, edit that out or I write the date. I think I'll leave it in this time because uh, I've never seen my Nakaya do that before. Oh, she's all right. I'm sure there's a perfectly good explanation. I just don't know what it is at the moment. So the Nakaya, oh, let's zoom out so you can actually see the whole pen. Oh, so the Nakaya Decapod Twist is probably the most, one of my most beautiful pens. I just love the artwork. I mean, Irushi is so fascinating. And then, of course, you unscrew it and, yeah. And then you have that beautiful nib. Now... Uh, the nib is a soft fine, which is also in one of my Platinum 3776s. The difference is, this has Nakaya finishing on it. Uh, and you pay quite a lot more. <laughs> but uh, I knew right away if I ever got a Nakaya from my experiments with experience with the Platinums, that was the nib I wanted on it. The ink is not a, a platinum ink, it's a sailor ink. One of my favorites. I think I'm gonna branch out when I empty this pen out this time. Plus, I've just been refilling it over and over with the same ink, <laughs> so maybe that's part of my problem. Um, I think I'm going to branch out and try a different type of ink in it. I don't know yet what. I've got some nice, uh, Sailor ink, or actually, I don't have a whole lot of sailor ink. I do have some, but anyway, I've got some nice uh pilot inks that I might try. A little bit of Robert Oster, I don't know, something that'll go well with the pen, uh, will look good with this soft, fine nib. I'm not sure what that ink is yet, but I'll, I'll figure one out. My next pen is my daily writer, back to her now, Lamy 2000. This is a fine nib, but I have found that it is, it's not quite as fine as the first one I had, uh, the one that had the unfortunate encounter with the floor. Um, I'll be careful not to drop this one, because I think if it encounters the floor, because... My floor here is 
almost, not quite, but almost as hard as the asbestos tile floor at work, which I guess home is work. So uh, for the foreseeable future, I am teaching from home. Uh, I am glad this happened now. I don't know what I would have done 20 years ago. 20 years ago, I didn't even have a computer in my classroom. No, 21 years ago. Uh, fall of 1999 is when I got my first full-time job. And, uh, yeah, no computer in the classroom. It was We got computers, I guess, toward the end of the next year. And they, yeah, it wasn't much. And then they, uh, my third year there, they finally looked at getting us more decent computers. You know, they, it was actually what, what I had is my first computer in my room was one of those old uh, iMacs when they came out and they looked like uh, big jewelry covered pieces of candy. And that's when the OS X first came out. All right, my next pen I've got here is a Geha 722. I actually have a first impression coming up soon. Uh, I haven't filmed it yet. Of <laughs> a Geha 726. Uh, I'm going to have to get on their website and figure out what the difference is. But maybe just as simple as uh, the cap. I'm finding the Geha pens mostly have just slip caps. They have this neat little ink reservoir. Or uh, not reservoir. Little button you push anyway to get extra ink out. So this is an oblique broad, but it's rounded. And I don't know what possessed me to put this ink in it. It's an ink I don't use very often. But I was sorting inks and, you know, putting the ones I actually use out. And um, the ones I don't use very often, I'm going to find a another storage place out of sight uh, that may actually encourage me to give some away. Uh, so this is Deatramentis. apple blossom and it just has kind of an apple-y well actually it doesn't smell anything like an apple blossom it does smell nice just uh you know not like what it purports to be uh, some of their inks have a you know I've, I've tried a number of samples i haven't bought too many bottles of their ink and well for now i'm i've got more ink than god so i don't need any more ink in my life and then we come to my Lanx CV Crocodile Clip Celluloid with my uh, clumsy gluing job. One of the reasons I'm a little afraid to do uh, some necessary pen repairs is I am not the neatest gluer. Yeah, I can tell I don't have the camcorder in my regular spot. Because I'm sitting at, at a weird angle to do this. And I did have it all worked out quite nicely. So I'll have to reconfigure everything here. Uh, the ink in it is Noodler's Dragon's Napalm. I just think this is a really sharp looking pen, just very pretty. And you know, not terribly expensive. Um, that's one thing I think China has really uh, brought a lot to the fountain pen world. And they have a long fountain pen culture, just like we do. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, prior to what when it got opened up in the 70s, I think, it was just a different world that we didn't live in. And we didn't see their products. Um, yeah, and it's not a time to be philosophical. I'm tired. <laughs> All right, this is a Caveco 37G with a nifty little Caveco nib. Yeah, this is not right. My lighting is off, too. Well, I'll figure it out. But 
the ink in this one is Parker Quink. I think so, it's Parker Quink. Let me just double check my list. Before I say something stupid. Yep, I'm right. Parker Quink. Because I had blue blacks in two different pens. And I... This is the brighter one. I was gonna bring out uh, Aurora Blue Black this week, but well, I only inked up two new pens, even though I took more than that out, and uh, for some reason I inked them both with very similar colors, as you'll see. So this next pen is also a Caveco. Caveco V14S. Uh, during my last pens and use, somebody uh, caught on to me mentioning the faults of noodlers, and uh, I don't know, we're kind of seeing one right here in this dragon's napalm. It's not all drying very quickly. Sometimes Noodler's inks can be very slow to dry, especially if they've been in the pen for a while. I listed a few, you know, it's popular in some corners to bash Mr. Tardif or the company, but, uh, you know, I try to not do that. I just, uh, when there's a fault, there's a fault and I'm going to identify it. You know, the, the brand seems to have in some quarters very fanatical loyalty and uh, other quarters very fanatical uh, detractors. Yeah. See, this isn't as... Uh, it's, it's a different in interpretation on blue-black. Okay, my next pen has... One of my favorite Noodler's inks in it. Uh, and I love how it looks in this pen. It's almost always the ink I put in this pen. Sometimes I put others. Uh, it's it's a, just a nice color. And it could be because of my interest in the First World War. Uh, I've learned since I started filming these videos, uh, I would often just not write the word heritage uh, that no the heritage is actually an important part of its name uh, because the heritage pens are squared off and the uh, ones where they don't have the word heritage which I don't have one out here but that would be like the uh, uh, custom 823 have rounded ends like you know like this phoenix here Okay, and this ink is Noodler's Matahari's Cordial. I even like the bottle. I haven't put it away yet. Maybe I'll quick grab it after I do the swatch. I don't remember why I started doing these swatches, but I kind of like them. I like looking at them later. I've found myself paging back through this notebook more since I started doing it. Yeah, so here's the the Noodler's uh, Matahari's Cordial bottle. Um, with a... Is that a mermaid? Or just a woman in a dress? I, I can't tell. No, that's a woman wearing a funky hat. 20s hat. With strategically placed hair. Uh, sold, I guess a doughboy, only he's a catfish. I don't know who does the art for noodlers, but they always have interesting labels. Uh, this Dea Trementis. You know, just a photograph of an apple blossom. Okay, and my last one, I <laughs> unintentionally made some Italians 
laugh with my pronunciation and gave them very odd images. I'll get to that here in a second. Uh, this is a pen BBS, but I replaced its nib with a uh, one I bought from. I want to say his name's Bobby, uh, but it's an Architects grind. I'd always been kind of curious about an Architects, but I didn't feel like I really wanted one. What they're supposed to be, yeah, is wider um, um, ah, wow, words, Daga stubs are usually kind of like this. So they'll do long, oops, they'll do long downstrokes. Uh, the architect nib is more like this. So it'll do uh, thin downstrokes but wide uh, cross strokes. I don't know why it's called an architect's nib. That's something I should find out. Anyway, the ink in it is Rohr and Klingner. Oops, there's no E in it. Blue, which is pronounced pretty much the same as your English language-ness would want it to be pronounced. But I pronounced that last week as Mare. Uh, you know, a German ink using Italian names was a little confusing. Um, I had no idea, so I just went with Blue Mare. So, of course, people are hearing, like, Blue Horse, which is an interesting idea. But it's actually pronounced, pronounced Blue Mare, or Mare, or something. Ah, I got the accent wrong. Um, three years of Spanish in under my belt. No Italian. I guess if I was going with the Spanish, that would be... Well, the languages are related. <laughs> Mare. If that is a word in Spanish. The Spanish was 25 years ago. So while I'm here, I wanted to talk about this Geha 326. I just emptied it out this week. Um, and then I cleaned it. And I did an experiment on it. I put... Nope, it's not back there. It must be put away already. I put... Well, of course it was. <laughs> How long ago did I ink this pen up? Uh, I put uh, Noodler's Rattler Eel Red in it. To deal with some staining. Now the nib is, you know, it is what it is. You know, for what little I paid for this pen. <laughs> I'll put up with that. Uh, but anyway, it came with vintage cartridges. And this vintage cartridge had been in use when they just put the pen away in a drawer and never touched it again. And it was all stained with blue down here. Now, uh, I I mentioned I put Rattler Eel Red in it because it's supposed to be good at removing stains. And I have to say, although there is a little lingering red there, whether that's from inadequate, inadequate cleaning or what, I don't know. But overall, I took care of this, that took care of the staining. Now, would another ink have done just as well? I don't know. But I do know my next experiment is going to be with this puppy. Uh, this is vintage Geha ink. And uh, I'm going to try putting that in the pen. Uh, I'll have to rehydrate it, of course, because, uh, you know, the 30, 40 years that this pen's been in a drawer, the, ink, or the water actually evaporates out of the ink over that time. Uh, one other topic I really wanted to bring up, uh, ODE did a video review recently, I don't remember if it was today, but it was recent, um, on uh, Parker Quink Green Ink, and he had some very vintage bottles, and uh, so I commented, and you know he was a little curious about where mine was made, so I pulled mine out. Mine is a newer bottle than his, and mine doesn't say Super Quink, and it doesn't have Solvex in it. Uh, it doesn't say permanent green, so it just says green ink, Parker Quink, England. I'm guessing that's where it was made. On the bot, oops, sorry, on the bottom. Manuf 
you know, New Haven, England. So I'm going to guess it was made made in England. So I don't know. He he he. We we seem to have slightly different colors of the Parker Quink Green. Uh, so we, we're trying to figure out if it's different formulations or what. And that, that's kind of hard when there's that big wet spot between our countries called the Atlantic Ocean. And we can't actually meet up in person without uh, violating all kinds of quarantine <laughs> orders and uh, paying for a very expensive airplane flight. So, uh, yeah, for, for now, we're just going to have to do it all by video. But anyway... I, I do like the color. It's very nice shading ink. I've used it recently, I think. See, I told you I enjoy paging back through this. Um, oh, I, I forgot I did that. <laughs> okay, maybe it's been longer than I thought. I would have sworn it was recent, though. Well, that's why you shouldn't swear. See him all the way back to January and I don't see it. Well, who knows? As soon as I shut off the video, I'll probably find it. Hmm. There it is. Parker Vacuum. I knew it was recent. It wasn't quite as recent as I thought, but it's on that funny heart page. So it is a very a, a very nice green. Um, I think it was Lamy Green is what he recommended comparing it to. I've never uh, used Lamy Green, but I do have one or two bottles of Lamy ink here. Uh, some other things I just wanted to bring up. You may have seen I did a video that I surprised myself with on a tool chest that I turned into pen storage. It's a Gerstner International tool chest. If anybody is interested in purchasing a similar product, I will just suggest purchasing the international version um, because it's a lot cheaper <laughs> than the uh, regular Gerstner line because Gerstner, the regular line, we're talking four figures for the equivalent version of my chest, the non-international so I, I would suggest getting the international version, unless, of course, you wish to purchase the more expensive version. Uh, I'm not sure what the difference is. There do seem to be more woods, like the the standard one you could find in Hickory, and there was a dark oak and walnut. and Or, as one of my commenters suggested, make your own. Or get one of the cheaper Harbor Freight options. Or, uh, I think it was Pierre Gustafson brought this one up. They and It's actually a product I had considered... But I wanted all my pens, including my big ones, to fit, so that's why I didn't go that route. But uh, there are drawers sold that, I think they're made out of beach, that are designed for pastels or artists' pencils that you can use. And they're quite low cost as well. And who knows, that might have been fine, but uh, dang, this thing is in my living room right now. Because it was going to be a, my bed stand, and uh, nope, I want it out here because I want to look at it. Uh, the base has not arrived yet. It is in Bismarck, so hopefully that will arrive later this week. Back when I ordered it, of course, I wasn't expecting uh, my world to change the way it has. So, uh, yeah, I'm just because of the uncertainty and because I don't want to either bring things into my house or make people transport stuff that don't need to be transporting stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm going to forego ordering things I don't need for now, which is good. I guess I'll just enjoy the things I have that much more. And uh, I've actually been doing a lot of cleaning lately. You may have noticed my shelf behind me is a little neater. Um, you can't always see it, but there's a tray of pen projects that usually sits on my air conditioning unit there. But that's been removed because it's now in my uh, new pen case. Um... That's nice, and it's nice to have them all in one place like that, because uh, several that weren't sitting on that tray are also in there. And it's just less precarious. I mean, it's a good spot for them. So uh, I've been doing a little working. Um, like I said, this Geha 726 here is ready to go now. That was, an actually, that was actually a pretty easy repair. Uh, I think I'm going to try and record a video here on pistons. Um... 
it's something I discovered while cleaning out this Geha 726. And then uh, I thought, well, let, I'm going to show the pistons from a few other of my repair projects. So, uh, anyway, I don't know exactly when you'll see that, but it's coming. Uh, I want to do a video on resacking. I think I've got a pen that's ready to be resacked. Uh, I just have to do some other stuff to it, but that might make a video too. Uh, I've been filming a lot of videos. I, I don't use this full setup with my students. I uh, usually use the camera I use for uh, my live streams on the channel with my students. Or I do have a... I have been guilty of using just the plain old camera on the computer, especially if I'm uh, doing stuff on the computer screen. Uh, then I can, you know, switch to that switch back and forth fairly easily and my picture doesn't have to be real high quality anyway so uh yeah that's my life right now teaching from home so uh classroom management you know you don't have to worry i mean you can't really see what they're doing because they could just you know turn turn on my live stream then go off and clip their toenails or whatever i'll never know uh, but, you know, we're doing the best we can with what we have in a very short period of time and uh, slowly learning how to teach in a totally new way. Just as a lot of people are learning to live in a totally new way. Um, that social distancing is hard. Um, and I know people aren't doing it so well sometimes. And when we look at how long this is going to be, uh, this is something maybe small parts of the United States have dealt with, but uh, never to the scale. I've never personally experienced anything like this in my life. Uh, so I guess maybe I'm glad it happened now at the school I'm at rather than, say, 21 years ago, back at my uh, first job when how would I do it? I guess I'd have to do it all like a correspondence course. Do they even do correspondence courses anymore? Where I just mail out the material to them and they mail it back? I I, I don't know. So, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, next thing I have to start thinking about is how do I do tests? Because traditional tests, uh, hey, Wally, would you put for... I'll do number one, you do number two. Or, hey, what, I got an even better idea. Let's go have Jeffrey do it. He's all dang smart. You know, <clears throat> gotta rethink tests a little bit. Uh, assessments, you, you, can't, you have to... Well, there's a lot of research about assessment out there, actually, that is it valid? Does it actually uh, take away from learning? Um, and I think this is an opportunity for schools to rethink some common practices. And it may be a time for schools to rethink... Do we need kids in desks every day? Um, I Yes, I think they get a lot more out of doing the labs in person than watching me do them on a video. Uh, I think discussion works a lot better in person than it does on a computer. But for a lot of things, like notes or just working on homework or working on questions, do they really need to be there? And I, and I ask that, I, I live in a, I teach in a school district that is, pulls kids from an area larger than the state of Rhode Island. Uh, our buses drive a ridiculous amount of distance every day to bring all these kids in. And why? <laughs> do, do they have to every day? Now I do realize, I, I teach high school kids, they're older, they're more mature, supposedly. <laughs> uh, let's not push it too far. But uh, I do realize that with younger kids, it's not the same because there's that element of child care. You can't leave your first grader on their own. Um, they need a lot more supervision than your junior in high school does. And uh, But I think, especially at the age group I teach, it does bring up the possibility that one of the things we really want to teach kids is how to motivate themselves and do things on their own without somebody standing over them and telling them to do it. Maybe this is a way. I don't know. 
Hmm. That wasn't on my list. <laughs> so I did film that video, the pen collection. Uh, I'm thinking it, I, I was watching a, well, listening to it more than watching because I was cooking. Um, but while I was cooking today, I was running a video by Pen Ultimate Dave that was, he was exploring, I think he called it part one of his Visconti's. Um, it might be interesting just to wander th my collection, of course, is quite different from his, uh, to wander through my collection once I get it all into this pen case uh, and organized. Well, I'm home. <laughs> it might be a video to film. Uh, I did try filming a video on my slide rules, but I was using this guy, and uh, it didn't work out too well so I think I'm going to try again but here now that I've got this set back up I tore all this down um, part of it down because I needed camera B here to go off and film my uh, Gerstner video and then I used the cell phone for close-ups and so on I uh, yeah so I got to rethink I, I, I have reconfigure all this and then my living room looks hoarded again because uh i've been pulling a lot of stuff off of shelves and reorganizing and getting rid of stuff so most of what's on the floor is either to get rid of or to rehome <laughs> hopefully outside of my house and uh i don't know it the shelves look the same but it i think it'll be very freeing once it's done and uh I don't know. We'll carry on with it till the next pandemic, I guess. So I'm running dry. I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, do expect I'll probably start doing a little more content. I almost filmed a driving video today, but then I was like, oh yeah, the footage is on that computer that's getting repaired. And I can't access it with the school computer. So that will wait for another week. Uh, did have a little bit of an adventure with Federal Express over that. Um, so, <clears throat> Apple was very good. They sent out this box almost right away. It was here within two days. Uh, I got it all packaged up, called Federal Express. They, um, as you can imagine, are overwhelmed right now. So, I talked to the nice computer lady for a long time. And then they transferred me to an operator. I was on a hold there for 15, 20 minutes. Finally, the phone rang and rang and rang and rang and rang. And then they hung up on me. <laughs> so I thought, well, Federal Express stops at the school a lot. So I took it to the school and just put it with the stuff to be picked up there. Um, except apparently they didn't stop at the school this week. So I finally called them again on Friday. Um, talked to the nice computer lady and she kept saying we cannot do pickup in your location but I finally got through to a live operator by then you know they couldn't pick it up on Friday so it'll be picked up on Monday but uh, boy that lady she was coughing she sounded terrible so I'm hoping she was working from home and uh, but you know she said that they've been overwhelmed they don't always know when they'll have drivers or if drivers will call in sick and you know, that's another reason why I'm stopping with the frivolous purchases. Uh, I just want... All of our delivery people are on the front lines. So I'd prefer to spare them for uh, important things. Uh, I do consider getting my computer repaired important. <laughs> I mean, there's a... I, I do a lot with it. But uh, aside from that, you know... I, and, and maybe my philosophy's all wrong, but I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. So I threw a lot out there today, um, mostly off the top of my head because my outline of things I was going to top it, talk about was fairly short. But anyway, this is late. I uh, apologize for that. And the, I had no reason for it to be late. I just... Friday, I was tired of being in front of a screen, and then I never thought of it again till now. So, anyway, I want to thank you for watching, and uh, 
If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens and uh, inks, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, um, you know, is the, the, this uh, virus impacting your online shopping habits at all? I guess I'm curious if I'm making any sense there or if I'm way off base. So let us know down in the comments or you know, feel free to uh, tell me I wasted my money on the Gerstner or uh, tell me I got my architect nib all wrong or something, you know, please feel free to leave a comment anyway. So I thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.